Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's service. It's uh, been a little rainy, and I'd also like to welcome any visitors. Do we have any visitors here today? A couple. Good to see you here. Uh, uh, for the parents, uh, Sunday, school is, uh, <clears throat> Sunday school is in the hall for children and young people. As the COVID-19 restrictions are still in place, any children and young people can go straight round to Sunday school in the hall. The stewards in the foyer can give you directions. This morning, I'd like to welcome Reverend David Campbell. Um, <laughs> too many Campbells. Let me start again. This morning, I'd like to welcome Reverend Campbell Egan, Reverend Dr. Campbell Egan, back to the pulpit. And uh, we look forward to um, your sermon again today. Thank you. Let us worship God. Prophet Isaiah, chapter 51. Be merciful to me, O God, because of your constant love. Because of your great mercy, wipe away my sins. Wash away all my evil and make me clean from my sin. I recognize my faults. I'm conscious of my sins. I have sinned against you, only against you, and done what you consider evil. Remove my sin, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Create a pure heart in me, O God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. We sing praise to God, some words from Psalm 103, O thou my soul, bless God the Lord.
Let us unite in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth, so that our minds may be nourished by your truth, our hearts open to your love, and our wills surrendered to your purposes. May all this be gathered up in adoration of you, as we ascribe glory, honour and praise to you alone, the eternal God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God of mercy, we seek your forgiveness, the forgiveness of all our sins. We are unworthy to be called your children, We are burdened with memories of things not done that should have been done and of things done that should never have been done. We are sorry and we repent. Lord, cover our mistakes with your mercy, our faults with your forgiveness our sins with your salvation. This we claim in the name of the Saviour, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus Christ, on this day, we remember that you were troubled. Your disciples deserted you and denied you and betrayed you. Your enemies had malice towards you and treated you with mocking and abuse. You endured your sufferings, your humiliation at Calvary to bring glory to the Father. So in our troubles and fears, Grant us your strength that we too might triumph all to the praise of the Father. We ask you to receive this our morning prayer and to your great name, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, with the whole church we give honour, glory and praise now and always. Amen. The first lesson comes from Jeremiah, chapter 31, starting at verse 31. Hear the word of God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it upon their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbour and each his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus says the Lord, who gives the sun for light by day, and fix the order of the moon and the stars for light by night, who stirs up the sea so that it has waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. This is the word of God. We sing to the praise of God the hymn, O Sacred Head Surrounded.
The new, first New Testament reading comes from Hebrews chapter 5, starting at verse 1. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to, to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is bound to offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not take the honour upon himself, but he is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he says also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of God. The second New Testament reading comes from John chapter 12, starting at verse 20. Hear the word of God. Now among those who went to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew went with Philip, and they told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honour him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show by what death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, lest the darkness overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said this, he departed and hid himself from them. This is the word of God.
May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This Sunday, second before Easter, is often known as Passion Sunday, and its theme is the sufferings of Christ culminating in the cross upon which we focus on Good Friday. So the text today comes from the passage for today, the Gospel passage, John chapter 12, verses 27. Now my heart is troubled. What shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? But this is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to you. A terrible accident occurred on the 14th of January, 1978, in Thailand. A group of Christian missionaries were travelling in a minibus and there was a terrible crash. Five missionaries, including two surgeons, perished. Seven children and three unborn children died in the accident. The accident caused, of course, immense grief and sorrow in that mission group. They were working about 250 kilometres north of Bangkok. They were running a hospital and they were serving the local people. They were doing their work in the name of Jesus. And then this terrible, terrible accident. And all the people associated with that mission were shattered. Eventually, when the director of the mission addressed the issue and the immense suffering and grief that was caused by it, he wrote a, a letter of confidence and hope and he quoted a verse from the letter of Paul to the Philippians in a modern version. The verse says, Don't allow the questions you can't understand limit the joyous certainties you already know. I'll repeat that verse. Don't allow the questions you can't understand limit the joyous certainties you already know. There is much suffering in life. Most people encounter troubles. These troubles can come at any stage in life and they inflict great distress on the people concerned. These troubles can come about as a result of an accident or an illness, or the action of some other person, or a broken relationship. And these troubles cause immense grief and sorrow. Why were those, the lives of those missionaries suddenly lost when they were doing good work for the Lord? Why does some deadly disease come a person, upon a person at the prime of life? It seems so unfair when people are afflicted, killed by a natural disaster, an earthquake, a cyclone, a flood or a bushfire. Life is full of troubles. It is full of sorrow. Jesus was a young man. He was in Jerusalem. 
and his enemies who had malice towards him were closing in on him. They wanted to shut him down. So the text says, Jesus was troubled. And he, in Luke's version of this incident, the words are Jesus praying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And Luke further describes the um, agony of Jesus. In great anguish, he prayed even more fervently. His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. So Jesus was troubled. And that immediately reminds me of that he was fully human. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. The Son became a human being. He endured our human life. And in that, he was troubled. So that leads us first to the first point of the sermon today, the agony of Christ. Outside the walls of Jerusalem, at the foot of the Mount of Olives, there's a very old garden. In that garden, there is a rock, which is known as the Rock of Agony. Christian people believe that um, it was in that general area that Jesus agonized. He'd taken his disciples to look out for, for the enemy, <laughs> but they were so tired, they went to sleep. So on that rock, Jesus agonized. That agony soon became physical torture. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. The scourging, the mocking, the crucifixion, the scoffing, and the end. And so, according to the records, in great anguish, Jesus uttered the words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the agony of Christ, the sufferings that we particularly remember at this time in the Christian year. Protestant people have used the empty cross to try and symbolize those sufferings that we remember, especially at Easter. They emphasize that after crucifixion came resurrection. After the cross came the empty tomb. Roman Catholics and other traditions of the church have always used the crucifix as the symbol for these sufferings. And that particular symbol does remind us of the agony, the pain, the suffering that Jesus endured for our salvation. Jesus was troubled. What shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? But this is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. So many things in life that we can't fully answer. We don't have slick answers to all the dilemmas that come upon us in our experience. So in the life of Jesus, especially his sufferings, there are so many things that we can't easily understand, let alone explain. So the verse from the Philippians is appropriate. Don't allow the questions you can't understand limit the joyous certainties you already know. 
the agony of Christ. But then secondly, the obedience of Christ. Often Jesus told his disciples that he was going to suffer. But perhaps they didn't understand what he, what he was talking about. But after they watched his sufferings, they understood. They observed the various trials before the authorities. They uh, observed the desertion and the betrayal and the denial of, of his close friends and the malice of his enemies. And when they reflected on these sufferings of Christ, they remembered some words from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, which seemed to apply so aptly to the suffering Christ, the obedient Christ. The Lord said, It was my will that he should suffer. His death was a sacrifice to bring forgiveness. After a life of suffering, he will again have joy. He will know that he did not suffer in vain. My devoted servant, with whom I am well pleased, will bear the punishment of many, and for his sake I will forgive them. So the troubles and sufferings of Jesus in that last week, we struggle to understand, to explain why, why, why. That letter to the Hebrews contains these words. Even though he was God's son, he learned through his sufferings to be obedient. When he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. It was Mrs. Alexander who put it so simply, we may not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us that he hung and suffered there. The obedience of Christ. For this reason I came into the world that I might go through the hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. And so that brings us to the third point, the glory of Christ. Just before this verse, Jesus gave a most powerful metaphor or picture. Here are the words. John chapter 12. The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive glory. I'm telling you the truth. A grain of wheat or corn remains no more than a single grain or seed. Unless it is dropped into the ground and dies, and if it does die, then it produces many seeds. I grow a lot of sweet corn during the, the summer period. From one seed comes a mature cob of corn. I once asked a, a granddaughter to count the number of corn seeds on a large mature cob. And um, she, she was pretty good at numbers. And eventually she came up to the conclusion around about 500 give or take a few this way or that way. From one seed, 500 seed. So from one death on the cross, many transformed lives. So the cross, once a symbol of pain and torture and death, has been transformed by the love of God 
into a symbol of salvation. There we can find salvation for our sins. If we believe, then that salvation comes to us. But there are many things that we can't understand in the sufferings of Christ. But that text from Philippians said, don't let the questions you can't understand limit the the joyous certainties you already know. We know the outcome of those sufferings, our salvation. In the hymn by Thomas Kelly, Weep Not for Him Who Died, in the second verse there are these words, inscribed upon the cross in shining letters, God is love. He bears our sins upon the tree. He brings mercy from above. Or Mrs. Alexander again expressed it so simply, he died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we might go at last to heaven saved by his precious blood. So the agony of Christ, the obedience of Christ, the glory of Christ, and the text, now my heart is troubled. What shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me, but this is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to you. Now to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we ascribe honour, glory, and praise, now and always. Amen. We join in the singing of Mrs. Alexander's hymn, There is a green hill far away. Members of the church, the uh, church generally wants to confess its faith, and the words of the Apostles' Creed have been used very extensively throughout the whole church 
ever since perhaps the second century, and they summarize the essential ingredients of the faith we profess. Let us then join with the universal church and state what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Thanks to you, O God, through your goodness to us, we have these gifts to share. Accept our offerings and us too, and use them to extend your kingdom and to bring glory to you. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Just a few announcements this morning. Thank you everyone who helped with the fair yesterday, particularly Jenny Liu in her first year as the fair convener, and to all the other church members and friends who are so willing to help with all the jobs and who donated so many of the goods as well. We raised just over $7,000 and with late sales still to come in. So in these days of the COVID virus, that was a very good result. And speaking of late sales, there are still some jams and plants available for purchase in the hall. You can see Margot in the hall afterwards um, near the jams by the stage. Um, just a reminder that the St Andrew's annual congregational meeting will be held tomorrow evening, Monday the 22nd of March at 8pm in the church hall. Also another reminder that if you've left an umbrella outside because of all the rain and things, don't forget to pick it up on your way out. We've, um, in the past we've had a good collection of umbrellas so it's, uh, you'll need it during the week I'm sure um, now it's my sand duty uh, to inform you that Beryl Clarkson a long time member of the church died last week and her funeral will be this week that's all the announcements let us now come together in our prayers of gratitude to God for all his goodness to us and our prayers for others, let us pray. Saving God, we thank you for our redemption in Jesus Christ. In him you have rescued us from our sin. You have reconciled us to yourself you have restored us to your family. We thank you for the suffering and the sacrifice that was necessary for our salvation. We thank you for Jesus, your son, who became one of us. He was obedient to your call. 
He was rejected by men, humiliated and despised. We thank you for the cross of Calvary and for his wonderful victory over sin and evil. Lord God, help us by your Spirit to rejoice in his salvation, to, to be embraced by his love, and to be energized in his service. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. Eternal God, our Father, we bring our prayers for others. We come with confidence because we know that you hear and you will answer our prayers all for our good, for your glory. We pray for our nation, our legislators at every level of government. We pray for the public service and council workers. Prosper within us a love of truth and fairness a desire that justice and peace flow through our national life. Lord God, bless the people living under the Southern Cross. We pray for the Holy Church in all its expressions, that all who confess Christ crucified and risen may serve him with love and zeal. Fill your whole church with faith, hope and love. God of kindness, hear our prayer for all who suffer in body, mind or estate. Where there is conflict, bring peace. Where there are tears, bring joy. Where there is despair, bring hope. Where there is sadness, bring comfort. Where there is darkness, bring light. Lord God, your love is all-embracing. May those for whom we pray experience your love. God of creation, you are also our Heavenly Father. You care for us, so we come to you with confidence. We thank you for a prayer answered, a blessing received. We seek guidance in all our troubles. Grant us solace in all our fears. Lord, hear the unspoken prayer of each person here today. We ask that you will receive these our prayers and in all things may your will be done. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus, our great High Priest, who taught us when praying to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing praise today is the old Negro spiritual, the hymn, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord?
May God the Father bless us. May Christ the Son take care of us. The Holy Spirit enlighten us all our days. The Lord be our defender and keeper this day and every day. Thank you.